Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. Well, after the smash hit Blade, and the even bigger smash hit Blade 2, New Line decided, eh, let's do a bad one. Released in 2004 and directed by Human Punching Bag for at least one more video, David S. Goyer, Blade Trinity let down tons of fans not by being the worst comic book movie, but by being another comic book movie. Say what you want about the first two, but they were big, over the top, and left an impression. This third installment is both more and somehow less of what we've already seen before. With such a crazy plot as Blade vs. Dracula, which already would have been a better title, how could any film make that uninteresting? Well, this flick found a way, and we're gonna analyze how it did it. Let's see why some motherfuckers are still trying to ice skate uphill. How can a series with a line like that end on a bad note? This is Blade Trinity. The film opens up with Ryan Reynolds, HELL YEAH I'LL BABOO! Talking about the famous Count, pretty much saying you don't know Drac. In the movies, Dracula wears a cape, and some old English guy always manages to save the day with crosses and holy water. But everybody knows the movies are full of shit. Don't believe me? Keep watching. Cut to a temple being entered by four vampires as goth Spock seems to locate the no longer resting place of old Vlad. Aw oh, shit, the security Spencer strobe light has been activated! The cut before the dollar store rave begins to an interview with a psychiatrist and the chief of police. So naturally, let's talk about vampires. True health can only be achieved if we reconcile the body and the mind. How's it fit in with vampires? Are you really shocked this is on cable news? We should focus in on characters like this Blade criminal. I want to hear about this character, Blade. This is already kind of a problem. I get the feeling this film wanted to do like Frank Miller's Dark Knight where there's news commentary on Batman, but Blade was fun because he was so secretive. He was fighting a war between these ancient beings that kept this all under wraps. And he was good at staying under wraps too. Now, he's referenced on talk shows? Blade is a troubled individual. To be fair, this is the kind of story Fox News would run when they're slipping in the ratings. Cut to Blade, played again by Wesley Snipes, hunting down bloodsuckers with his mentor Whistler, played again by Chris Christopherson. The one thing every Wesley Snipes movie gets right? Wesley Snipes. Honestly, the opening fight sequence is fine. Not as much martial arts, but an appropriate amount of badass silliness. Things go south, though, when Blade discovers one of them is human, and this was all a setup to frame him for murder. This guy's pretty happy for being a pawn sacrifice. Set your sorry ass up. <laughs> I mean, for this you'll get off easy, but wait till you see the audit coming your way, man! The FBI turns him into public enemy number one, and they try tracking him down. Meat is eating it up. They're waging a goddamn PR campaign. Now it's not just vampires we gotta worry about. It's hashtags, MSNBC, replacing your voice actor even though you ain't a cartoon. Fuck you around, I'm hungry and I wanna eat somebody. I do like the idea that city life is so strange vampires can say out loud who they want to kill and nobody cares. Keep me on board. Oh, looks like we got ourselves a combo meal. Fools, don't you know when you see French bread in a paper bag, it's always fake groceries? It's like barrels in an action movie, they're there to be destroyed! Fuck you. Damn, the bird lady from Home Alone 2 cleans up nice. This is Abigail, played by Jessica Biel, who's doing a much better job protecting herself than Blade and Whistler, whose hideout is being broken into by police. Let's catch a plan, Wilson. Time to take these cowboys down. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Hey, remember in the first film when they said, I can go to the police. They own the police. Remember what a creepy idea that was and it gave you the magnitude of how big this all is? They even had that one cop henchman who worked for him. Well, now they're just schmucks. Like if they own the police, why did they need to frame him? Just send the cops to begin with. It's like killing off Whistler just to bring him back, just to kill him off again. Huh, clip's a little delayed on this one. There we go. Angry reaction! Yes, Whistler blows himself up rather than be taken prisoner. And you do have to ask the question, how is Blake gonna react to that? Because we've already seen this in the first film. He was paralyzed with grief and in the end he couldn't even look at him pull the trigger before turning. It was a quiet, powerful moment. Obviously they have to do something different the second time he dies and, well, it is different. <laughs> I think 
we need a play-by-play -play of that? You'll notice he limbos and pelvic thrusts both at the same time, as if to say, I hate your lobar death, now take my dick. We then cut to an awkward green screen keying effect, in which we see a keyed blade actually looks less three-dimensional than a key blade. Next, he impressively lays an egg off camera. The crew thought he had a case of the squatting shits again, but he was just giving birth to poultry. And finally, it ends with his reaction every time somebody asks if he was into Wang Fu. It's a shame the Academy didn't consider this for an award, but I'm sure Snipes would have preferred a ceremony people would watch. Hello, Blade. He's arrested and approached by the psychiatrist from the opening, who no doubt takes the murder of the hundreds of people that Blade killed very seriously. I think somebody here wants to talk about vampires. Vampires. You're the doctor everybody thinks about when they hear the president has to take a mental test before serving. Tell me about blood. You drink blood. You ever feel sexually aroused? Sorry, I was the doctor for Angelina Jolie. I have to ask everybody that now. I'm starting to wonder what your relationship with your mother was like. The very sweet taste of saliva. Delicious physical intimacy. Mr. Goyer, did your doctor's therapy notes work their way into this somehow? It turns out the psychiatrist is working for the vampires as the Parker Posey posse arrives to take him away. We moved the humans around. We used them to flesh it out. I have to admit, she might be my favorite part of the movie. As she looks like popsicles of Steven Dorf and Brad Dorf melted onto the face of a Monster High doll. I should have ripped his bleeding heart out when I had the chance. Hannibal King! We had Blade. We had him! If her job is to suck the blood of the scenery, she's the human equivalent of the sound effect. But the party is crashed by fuck you, which I think is the perfect way to sum up this film in the series, who's played by Ryan Reynolds. He rescues Blade and gets him back on his feet. Abigail joins him as well and reveals herself to be Whistler's daughter. Yeah, I think I see why they're flickering the lights here. If you take out the sound effects, it does not look like they're hitting these people that hard. If at all. Strange to replace the martial arts with flashlight tag football. Uh, keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. We're fucked. Well, yeah, you yeah, are now dumbasses! Blade rescues his rescuers and they catch a ride out of there. No! He was just on his way to his fourth H! introduced to the Night Stalkers, which sounds like... <sighs> help me out here. Sounds like rejects from a Saturday morning cartoon. A guy who hunts vampires said that, think it over. Ever wonder what the male equivalent of Cyboob is? I used to be one. Of course Ryan Reynolds discovered it! Speaking of which, he gives the lowdown about what they're up against. Her name is Danica Talos, and unlike typical vampires, her fangs are located in her vagina. Moving on. Reynolds might be the only dweeb turned superhero while he was a superhero. If he's supposed to be the cool one, who's supposed to be the geeky one? Ah, uh, holy shit. Um, gentlemen and hottie. I too was shocked he was picked for this role. Have you ever been laid? Many times. With ladies. Not that there's anything wrong with being laid by a man. You know, it's ironic. This Patton Oswald would probably be called out by current Patton Oswald. Meanwhile, we see the vampires are seeking to destroy Blade by calling on the help of the Risen Dracula, played by Dominic Purcell, whose powers include moving at the speed of a living statue. You're nothing but shadows of your former selves. Look how far you have fallen. Now, if you've seen this guy on shows like Prison Break, you know he's a really good actor. But casting him as Dracula, the Vampire Lord of Darkness, is an impressive miscast, to say the least. I get what they're going for, like the ultimate lethal specimen, so he'd be really big and strong, but look at him. He's not the ultimate vampire, he's the ultimate vampire henchman. If you saw him in a lineup of Draculas, you'd think he'd be the one bodyguarding these guys. 
With that said, he does get a funny scene when he observes how people see him years later. We've got Dracula lunchboxes, bobbleheads, even vampire vibrators. Dracula. Makes you want to cry, doesn't it? Agreed, you came up with Dracula, but not Dicula for the vibrator. Boy, they really wanted to emphasize the count part over the chocolate element back then, didn't they? <laughs> it's okay! Everybody will look at you differently once the Dark Universe gets rolling! Blade helps the Night Stalkers try to locate Dracula, while also helping speak to a younger, hipper crowd. She likes to listen to MP3s when she hunts. It's like her own internal soundtrack, you know? Dark core, trip hop. Yeah, if there's a problem we had with Blade, not cool enough. I mean, come on, there's no better way to end an interrogation when your victim's phone rings like this. It's for you. Hello? <laughs> Replace that man with the old can you hear me now guy and I'd be happy. They locate, meh, for round two, but he runs away because, you know, he's the most powerful vampire. <laughs> he kidnaps a baby though, forcing him and Blade to chat. Look at them down there, scurrying around like insects. Wrong Lugosi role you're imitating, but I'm curious to see where this goes. I think this line was written just to see if Snipes would say it. Gucci go. Of course he would. It's been about an hour in the film since Whistler died. Maybe his daughter should have some kind of reaction to it. Guess that's it! Back to Reynolds not being funny! Say we wipe out all the vampires. What then, huh? I, I don't picture you teaching karate at the local Y. He hates me, doesn't he? Everybody does. Twelve more years, it'll be worth it. Later, Blade and Abigail confront one of the FBI agents at a vampire location. Did I mention yet that Snipes has all the best scenes? What's behind door number one? They'll kill me. Kill you, motherfucker! I'll kill you! I'll just enjoy better. Why do I get the feeling they always allowed one take for him to do whatever he wants? God in heaven. So that's where chicken and nuggets come from. After seeing how hot dogs are made, the Night Stalker's hideout is broken into by Dracula, who kills everyone. I guess I could act, but I don't wanna. He takes the daughter of one of the members, and Abigail discovers her dead teammates. Yeah, her father dying wasn't a big deal, but this lady you never shared a line with? Pull Niagara Falls out for that man! Ah! Blade's bedtime manner once again? Flawless. <laughs> Use it. Use it. <laughs> Use it. Aw, oh, he would have been a great dad. Daddy, I had a nightmare! Well, how do you follow up this apparently emotional moment? Jesus, what the fuck? You know films aren't buffets, right? You don't just grab random moments to put on your plate. Give Reynolds credit, this is the one good laugh he has in the movie. Clearly, this dog has a bigger dick than you. Ow! I was talking to her! Pretty good! Pretty, pretty good. Of course, it is followed by this weird line. And how about everyone here not saying the word dick anymore? It provokes my envy. I don't even know what joke to put to that, moving on. They grab a serum that apparently can kill Dracula, because it's always a serum, isn't it? And they head out to save Reynolds. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I kind of thought the henchmen would be a little less WeWork employees. I have a startup. 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 Ready to die. I was born ready, motherfucker. Motherfucker. We're in Vancouver, everybody was too polite to talk that way. Blade battles Dracula, but I'm not gonna lie, Ryan Reynolds battling Triple H? A little cooler. And this is just how me and Sandra Bullock rehearse for the proposal. He transforms into... I don't know, Darth Maul's hemorrhoid. But the serum is injected into him, killing him off. The FBI break in and find Blade unconscious, and they try to operate on him as he was affected by the serum too. And I'll just say it, I don't follow this ending. He attacks everyone, looks at this doctor like he's gonna kill her, and then it cuts. Reynolds' ending narration tries, the keyword being TRIES to explain. And Blade? The virus didn't kill him, and so he slept, waiting 
for the moment when he could walk the earth again. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, no shit, I've never done this before, but I'm actually gonna look up what happened because I'm so confused. Okay, so Dracula shapeshifted into Blade and was taken to the hospital where he killed everybody. Blade woke up out of a coma sometime later and now continues to search for him. Okay, not only is that lame, it's confusingly lame. I think Poochie had a more detailed epilogue than that. That's it? That's really the note you're ending these films on? Okay, that was Blade Trinity. It was pretty weak. There's an occasional cool moment or good laugh, but compared to the other two, hell, just compared to action movies in general, it's just dull. All of these actors are mad talented and can bring a lot to a film like this, but whether it's the writing, editing, directing, or production notes, it never gets off the ground. The characters have no chemistry with each other. Hell, some have no lines with each other. Everything you're supposed to care about is minimized. It looks ugly as shit. It's just not impressive. I keep hearing Marvel is gonna reboot this franchise, and a part of me does kind of feel bad because the first two are so unique and a lot of fun. But I guess if future movies in this series was gonna be like this, it's a damn good time to start over. Speaking of reboots, I think they just dropped off the next film I'm supposed to review. Where'd you go?